All right, good morning, Tika class. I have a fun, interesting class for you guys today. Um, so many directions. I've got lots of classes to teach today. I've got to find the place <coughs> in my consciousness that I was going to deliver to you this morning. Okay, so we had a great Q&A on Thursday. Um, somehow it posted live on Facebook. I don't know. I think that was my fault. So when I stream Second Sunday, it goes to Facebook and YouTube. And I think I forgot to switch the button last time. So um, if anybody has a problem with their Q&A being live out there, let me know and I will remove it. Otherwise, you know, somebody needed to hear it. Okay, so today's class, you know, this is this is what I'm getting. Um, you know, I think I had 50 emails sitting in my um, email this week about just what is this big, big thing that's going to happen in December? Just what's going on in December, you know, and lots of different teachers, excuse me, lots of different teachers are talking about it out there um, and messengers and channels. And it's funny how vague it is. Right. And here's why. Here's why future potentials should always stay vague. OK, and this is how, you know, false light versus real, legit uh, communication with spirit. First and foremost, you are creating your own reality. So if anybody gives you an absolute, right, an absolute, this is what's happening. You can guarantee that they're only looking at one timeline. That's just like your old school psychics. OK, now when you're looking at multiple timelines and you're looking at multiple possibilities and you're looking at multiple universes all focused in the same direction there is probabilities right so if the collective is all looking in one direction that makes a probability more solid that makes the chances of manifesting manifestation of that focal point uh, more relevant more active more um, more probable okay so that's what i mean when i say collective a collective is a bunch of different quantum universes all pointing in the same direction all believing in the same energy same storyline same belief structures same ideals and so we have these clusters of collectives all throughout the planet who are are, are thinking and believing in one particular focal point and that what that's what creates the collective. And I think in the World War Three uh, talk I gave you guys, I kind of broke down that right now there's three major collectives, which means there's three major vo vocal focal points. Okay, got yeah, my braces tightened again. It makes my jaw all crazy. Um, so when we're looking at these three vocal points, then there's three different probabilities. Now. Depending on what collective you are, that probability will manifest in your reality more quickly if you're focused upon it. That's why I always telling you guys, eyes on your own paper, eyes on your own paper, eyes on your own paper. Because if you are looking at someone else's collective, judging them, by default, because all you are is focused imagination, all you are is focused consciousness, by default, some of your energy field will blend over into that other collective. And by your very resistance and judgment to that collective, you become part of that collective, which means that you may not, you know, partake, you may not agree, you may not um, hang out with, you may not, um, you know, talk to or through, but if you're looking, you by influence are bringing that collective into your, your future collectives. And I, I've had the opportunity of witnessing this so many times where I meet someone who and they literally stay out of everybody's way. They do their own thing. You know, um, I'm not going to give any names, but, you know, someone in my family who literally is reading the Bible at home, learning, viewing, reading and not interacting with any other collective, but watching and judging and it's funny because this person who literally harms no one who does nothing wrong manifests getting his debit card stolen who gets in car accidents so you can see by it has nothing to do with necessarily 
only your actions or only your thought. It is where you are focusing that brings you into that specific collective that you then are in line to manifest the results of that collective. Because collective is just like one giant, I got here, giant belief system all focused in the same area. That's why I say the three focal points right now are the three collectives are the one that's in absolute fear, anger, rage, judgment, right? who is judging you for believing anything other than what the news is saying and, you know, is ready to go buy ammunition and guns, except is also against guns and also against this. And it's a very, it's a very complex paradox over there. It's like, they don't even know what they're angry about. Okay. Then the middle ground is your spiritual, it's, it's your spiritual realm that is all about rules and boxes and, um, following, you know, love and light to the potential of anyone who isn't love and light needs to be judged, needs to be isolated from, we need to be protected from, we need to keep the distance, you know, it's harmful. And that is that middle collective of love and light spiritual community. Now we got the responsibility community. I won't even define it as quantum. I'll just say zero responsibility false responsibility, absolute responsibility, the third collective, which I'm hoping you're finding yourself in because this is where your ultimate power and potential is, is when you take full responsibility for your own vibration. If you are looking and noticing anything outside of you, it is only to find the reflection and the neutrality to understand and move in that, under, uh, move in that reality to bring it back into your own personal responsibility and actually like radiate your own gifts outwardly instead of defining your gifts through outside of you okay so that's that third collective so obviously when everyone's talking about december 21st the big bang the big shock the big shock wave the big event you know you have to understand that there's three major potential results from the same experience just like Three people with three different belief systems can watch the same movie and get a completely different experience, understanding and value or disvalue of it based on who they are. Perception is reality. Perception is reality. Perception is reality. I need that to get in there for you. OK, so but what I'm going to tell you as far as a. Um, kind of a, a chemical understanding or a. Um, an understanding kind of a metaphorical or even a metaphysical understanding of what is going to happen in December on December 21st is really what's happening is is everything is kind of lining up into position okay and we are you know January started this very fast moving vision quest to move all the way inside of yourself now the way that i kind of want to give you the metaphor of understanding why it's so important to get all the way inside of yourself as if you've ever been in the ocean and you see a big wave coming what you want to do is you want to bury your feet down into that sand you want to become the sand you want to anchor yourself inside that sand so that when that wave comes right it's not going to knock you down and tumble you okay so what the vision quest has actually been doing for you is getting your feet down in the sand knowing thyself being very present of what's coming of what's going to either hit you or move right through you into you through and become you okay there's lots of different options here there's the one who is getting hit by the wave tumbling in the surf there's the one that is bracing themselves at the last minute that second collective and is going to get knocked down and you know throw a hissy fit and then that third collective who already anticipates what is coming because they're so present and anchored within their own bodies and awareness that they're like already gearing up energetically, mentally, physically, etherically, ready to accept and become that wave. OK, and that is exactly what I can say is coming is it's it's technically an alignment that is going to create a domino effect that once everything moves into position it's going to appear if you are looking at it intuitively from a higher perspective as the scene in star wars when they when they first experience light speed right 
And all of a sudden they're driving and they're like, let's hit the light speed. And all of a sudden everything just accelerates because although it's going to feel like a wave, if you're present, if you're unpresent, you'll feel like you're getting tumbled, which you're probably already feeling the beginning effects of that now in your reality. If you're not anchored in your body, if you're not anchored in your truth, if you have not surrendered enough right now, because the only way to survive 5D is to let go. Now I'm saying let go of the need to resist the wave and become the wave. So it's a very different surrender because I'm not asking you to hold on here. I'm asking you to become very different energy. Okay. So it's going to be metaphorically like that, that light speed effect where we are going to jump timelines in a way where if you watch that beginning of Star Wars and they go light speed, they enter in a completely different dimension, millions of miles away from where they were. OK, this is your opportunity. Now, let's look at those three metaphors of being hit by the wave or becoming the wave or falling down. So the first collective is not going to enter into the light speed. They are not going to per, they're not going to propel their expansion. They're actually going to be left on the land to deal with their victim energy, with their lack of responsibility, with their judgment, with their um, belief systems, with their you know, sheep mentality, okay? The second collective is gonna get lost in that turbine, right? It's gonna get lost and shaken up and it's gonna have to make really quick choices, whether it lines up with the energy and moves through the wormhole or if it holds on to the land to figure out who it is and what it is for a little bit longer. So I honestly have told you guys since the beginning that middle collective is gonna have it the roughest because they know enough and they are aware enough to experience what is happening, but they don't have enough personal responsibility and personal understanding and personal self-love to know what choice is right for them. They're going back and forth, back and forth. So it's going to feel like they're in a kind of a, a washing machine for as much time. And I can't say how long because time is irrelevant. It's all about choice. It's all about intention. It's all about action. It's all about movement. It's all about thinking. It's all about feeling. So I can't tell you how long they will be sitting in that kind of washing machine getting, you know, flipped around by the waves because they're not learning their lessons and they're not becoming self-love and they're not becoming intenders and they're not becoming creators and they're not taking responsibility. So what we will notice after this is that life is going to get really different. Okay. So you want to decide if you're ready to go light speed. You need to decide if you want to hold back for a little while and lead those sheep. You want to become a shepherd for those sheep in, in, in a very important time for them. Because whether it takes them another 29,000 years to ascend, to make it to the, to the airport where the light speed gateway is, it don't matter. Because time is irrelevant to you because you are a soul. Whether it's one lifetime or ten lifetimes, you don't care at a soul level. Now, your body is saying, I don't want to do this again. But the thing is, is you're being asked to now get to the other side of this bridge that I've been talking about for the last year. And you got to make a choice. Okay? And the choice is, am I going or staying? Because if I go, I have to let everything go. And I have to get on this ship. And I have to go light speed. Now, if you watched my 5D uh, webin webinar or workshop that I did for um, Positive Life magazine in Ireland, and it's online, it should be in your Tika uh, archives, I talked about saying that you are the creator of your reality. So when you go light speed, guys, and you get off that ship, metaphorically, everyone and everything you want is going to be there waiting for you in a different timeline, which means... If you have people that you're leaving behind, if you have things you're leaving behind, if you're having stories you're leaving behind, if you're letting go of body stuff and you're if you're entering for, into the body for the first time and, and letting that old pain body go, you understand probably more logical than you actually do believe yet that everything you want is on the other side. Now, when you get off the airport, right, of the metaphorical um, time travel, right? Which is what 
December 21st is. It's a rebirth of the Christ consciousness. Getting close to Jesus' birthday, right? It's like it's all a metaphor of what is. So it's like this last eight years, technically last nine years, because the shift really happened in 11, um, in uh, 2011, right? If you really understand that, it really started to begin the contractions of the ascension process. OK, it really is about you becoming these last, you know, nine years, you becoming you. Right. And you've been in the womb of creation. It's been bumpy. It's been tragic. It's been hard. It's been a wake up call. It's been loss. It's been success. It's been growth. And now if we looked at what 20, uh, uh, you know, December 21st actually represents is your birth date. Doesn't that give you chills? Right? So what are you gonna do with that? You know, do you wanna you wanna be what do you want to be birthed into? And every other guru out there is saying, oh, we don't know what's gonna happen, we don't know what's gonna happen. And the truth is they are absolutely right because what's going to happen for me may be different for what's gonna happen to you. And what's going to happen to your cousin and your mother and your sister and your uncle. And yes, you may need to mourn for the fact that they don't want to come on the ship with you. You may need to mourn that. So do it. Don't resist it. Because if you resist mourning it, that energy will lock you into whatever collective you're in resistance of. Because resistance is glue. It is glue. And it will not think that you're making a conscious choice. But when you are in resistance, you are making an unconscious choice, which is the same as a conscious choice. Unconscious choice, conscious co choice. The universe doesn't care. It's going to hold you to whatever choice you're making unconsciously or consciously. So if you've done the vision quest, if you've done quantum fitness, if you've been sitting in class, if you're in teacher training, Teacher training is obviously getting a way more in-depth teaching of this. And actually their class today is all going to be on their facing their greatest fear because it is going to be as you're making your way to the airport to go light speed on December 21st, you will be faced with everything that you need to look at to take personal responsibility, to fall madly in love with yourself, to surrender and let go of to get in alignment with, to challenge those lack beliefs, to hold you accountable for whatever karma is left within you. And your job is to say, challenge accepted, I've got to get to the airport. Now, you don't have to choose that because there will be a place for you no matter what you choose, okay? And if you say, you know what, I really cannot let my family go and I just do not believe that they're on the other side waiting for me. So I'm going to stay here and I'm going to be their guru and I'm going to be the one who shows them out of hell. And, you know, I've been here long enough that I get it. You will make the choice. And that's perfect for you because we will need, we will need awakened beings to stay back and guide them through their ascension process. Because the big first round is shipping out. Okay. Which means that the the desires that you have will be challenged do you really want this you know who are you really what how much do you really love yourself because your measure of self love is going to be based on what you are ready to surrender to okay you have to love yourself more than anything and anyone that means your children that means your possessions, that means your spouse, that means your job and your money and your stories and what you thought you knew and wanted. Because you might as well just move into that surrender state and go with the flow. But the event may feel like nothing to you because the way your linear third dimensional body is designed is for you to literally time travel across the universe and shift into parallel realities and move into different holograms and co-create in other people's storylines and be the actor in other people's story and have no witness of it. It will feel like, 
whoa, I just have so many more opportunities. And, you know, I, I am starting to get a new relationship with my mom and I'm starting to manifest my wildest dreams and I'm starting to be more responsible for my body and be more aware of the situations. And I mean, that's from my perspective, what I am uh, moving in and through. So I guess this event that is coming through for you, this rebirthing, we've been in the womb for the last nine years, right? We're moving into completion. So whatever is born is going to be the totality of your ascended vibration at this point. So whoever you are as an ascended being on December 21st is the reality that you will take, put on, and become. Now, it doesn't end. It's not like, ta-da, you're, it's finished, you're done. No, it's a brand new beginning because when a baby is born, that is when its life truly begins. So I really want you to sit with this and think, okay, I haven't even been born yet. This was all like pre-gaming. This was all pre-planning. This was all watching and viewing and feeling and feel, feeling like it was so outside of my control. Cause you can imagine what it feels like to be a baby in the womb. It's like they might be sending signals to mom constantly and, and doing as much as they can energetically, but they are very much at the mercy of that mother which kind of is what our life has felt like. We have been at the mercy of reality. We have been at the mercy of the collective. We have been at the mercy. And through that observer effect, we have been able to learn to decide and choose and discern what it is we choose to be. And so when we do that, we have an educated awareness of what we want our life to be then when we're born. So I want you to really like look at this metaphor and, and take stock of your life and see, you know, wow, this was just this was just me in the womb the last nine years. This was me just gearing up and getting ready. And some of you just started this journey a year or two ago or a year ago or six months ago. And you're like, I was in the womb for nine months. You had to have been to hear my voice right now because my voice is coming from a collective that takes a certain level of awareness to even hear. That's why I'm always saying, guys, don't push me on your friends and family. Because if they're not the vibration of the level of awareness that can hear, understand the idea of accountability through personal responsibility that creates your reality through a quantum paradox of possibilities, they ain't going to get it. All right. So this is the next level. So this is kind of like, let's all light speed ahead. Let's go create heaven on earth because the ships are just going to keep coming in keep coming in when enough of that collective vibrates to the point of I'm ready to be this higher vibrational being of myself, then they will make it to the airport. And so it's not like you're the only ship that's going to come. They're going to be coming in waves, just like the star seeds came in waves. We're going to be moving in and out, moving in and out, moving in and out, creating a new earth based on everyone's asking. Have you noticed that when your children are born, they know how to do things that you don't know how to do? You know, have you noticed that they're better at things than you are? They they are more voice, you know, um, activated in their feelings. And here's why. Because when you ask, it's given. And so your generation asks and the seeds that come in become the asking. They become the knowing. And so they become the teachers. So that everything is in cycles and systems and everything is in perfect alignment. So the retrograde that we're moving into right now is all about you facing your greatest fears and looking at the resistance that you still have to let go of. And where do you need to surrender and where do you need to get a backbone and where do you need to get self-love that you can call boundaries or whatever else and start working on becoming someone who could survive the journey through light speed, which is going to feel so much more like who you are. All of you guys who have time wounds, you know, who are like, when is this going to happen? Hurry up and wait, hurry up and wait, right? You got to let go of that because when you start going light speed, you're not going to be ready for the timeline because it's going to be so sped up. You're going to be lost in disassociation because you've been waiting for so long. You are someone who waits. And over there, it's this, 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 this. 
And it was interesting because I was watching the Big Bang Theory last night with Madison. And they were talking about string theory. And they were talking about how everything is in knots and, and entangled until the fourth dimension. I'll have to put the episode on it because I was like, I stopped and I was cooking dinner. I was like, oh, interesting. Everything is in knots until the fourth dimension. And then once you get to the fifth dimension, the reason why string theory changes in its organism and its understanding is because nothing can be in knots past the fourth dimension, which means there is no entanglement, but everything is in layers after the fifth dimension, which means what do you choose? Nothing's so tangled that you can't see it. Nothing is so stuck that it keeps pulling you in. It is just what page are you choosing because it becomes a layered effect of choice and destiny, choice and destiny. So I'll, I'll find out what episode it was because I was like, oh, this is so hard. Anyways, that's my class for today. And so hopefully that um, totally scared the shit out of you and excited you at the same time. I love you. I will talk to you all soon.